the DNA of the media as it stands today is significantly forged and shaped by the crucible of the emergency. It is significantly forged by the Nehruvian legacy and the Gandhian legacy, not Mahatma Gandhi, but Indira Gandhi. Taken forward ably by her son Rajiv Gandhi and even by Sri Manmohan Singh, Dr. Manmohan Singh, the most educated prime minister of this country, apparently. First, independent India certainly saw enough voices which had the guts and the temerity and the audacity to question the Nehruvian government. However, the fact of the matter remains that the Nehruvian government did not display democratic tendencies. In fact, it, de it demonstrated anti-democratic tendencies. The very first amendment to the constitution with respect to free speech was promulgated and enacted because Mr. Nehru's government lost in the Supreme Court, thanks to Ramesh Thapar and Brij Bhushan, both of whom questioned the land reform policies of Mr. Nehru. So to overcome a judgment of the Supreme Court, he introduces the First Amendment, which has significantly broader, vaguer, and blanket proscriptions against free speech. Something that was, of course, supported by the chairman of the Constitution, uh, let's say the drafting committee of the Constitution, his law minister, so to speak, the, the lawyer to the government, Dr. Ambedkar. Now, why is this crucial? It's not as if this particular tendency was limited to the Nehruvian government. Because the fact of the matter is, apart from instances under his legacy, it was under the emergency or during the emergency, the government developed a tendency to classify media under three categories, friendly, hostile, and neutral. These were revealed, these are documented facts. Based on their reportage, 12 days before the imposition of the emergency, during the emergency, they basically slotted these, these newspapers as friendly, hostile, and neutral. Now, which were these newspapers? Let me actually uh, wash this dirty linen in public for a moment. Amrit Bazar Patrika, Hindu, and Hindustan Times and Times of India were classified as government friendly based on the reportage before and during the emergency. Now, these are the voices which are apparently speaking truth to power. Now, why is this crucial? Emergency effectively led to a certain tendency where independent voices were told, fall in line, or there will be repercussions in addition to loss of revenue. Now, again, why is this crucial? Because revenue was a point that was raised. Most people don't know that the Press Information Bureau and the Directorate of Advertisement and Visual Publicity were constituted during the emergency to screen reportage and to ensure that people are effectively threatened on the basis of the government advertising they would get or they would not get depending on how they speak. Now this is important because when someone says that the job of a reporter is to only present, I'm sorry, no, it is not the job of a reporter only to present. The job of the reporter is to contribute to information discourse by elevating the course of public discourse and contributing to shaping of opinions and to formation of opinions. There's nothing wrong with it. Which means I am perfectly comfortable with a journalist who at least wears his ideological proclivities on his sleeve as opposed to hiding behind the facade of neutrality. So what we have gone through all these years is the Indian traffic position, which is keep left, being the mainstream position as far as media is concerned, and the keep left position is presented as neutrality, so that whoever speaks against it comes out as the dictatorial right wing. You see how convenient this is and what kind of a trap you are in.